Susan Saltiki, who she's from Turkey, Thank you for and uh, she's been teaching me how to cook uh, Turkish food. She's been teaching me about her culture, about her language, and I am very fortunate to be here in our home today. And she agreed to show us all about um, Turkish tea ceremony, what goes in the in the tea, what what can you pair with it, how do you set up your table, and all these amazing things. So we are so ex excited. And we would like for you guys to be with us. If you have any questions, please ask them. And uh, we just want to also uh, give thanks to uh, Austin uh, Cultural Arts Division. Uh, this amazing platform here in Austin, in the city of Austin, is helping a lot of projects like this. So we can be able to share um, our, our passion for the culture, our passion for the heritages and, and, and all these um, and cultural arts that are happening within here. So you don't really have to go away, you can just stay in Austin and stay tuned for programming like this. So we also want to thank uh, another um, organization called Austin Creative Alliance, whereby they are our fiscal sponsor and they help us to, to do a lot of things behind the scene um, and with our grants and all these other cool things. And then also, last but not least, Rendro Foundation. Yeah, Foundation. yeah so yes. this is a, a community uh, platform uh, whereby they do a lot of events, they do a lot of help in the community. So please stay tuned. Um, we also are uh, thanking of my friend Benio Jute, who is good today, is taping this um, this uh, this event. And so stay tuned. And we're gonna have a, a professional video sent out to everybody. And this is all about celebrating cultures from around the world. Susan, mm -hmm. please welcome. And I'm gonna leave you to, to say about yourself and yes. tell us more yes. about mm -hmm. this amazing event. Thank yes. you so much, everyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am volunteer of the Indra Foundation. Uh, my name is Suzanne Salter. I have been in U.S. for almost 20 years, and I have been volunteering with the cooking events and cooking classes through the Indra Foundation and through ACC also. And I am here for introducing the Turkish tea, or and the Bahav Turk says chai to you. And chai is the Turkish tea, and I have. Two packages of the uh, samples over here. Those are the brands that I, I am going to use today, but we have also other brands, other uh, uh, stuff, uh, but I am just going to introduce you just these two. And I am having blend of the Turkish tea over here. But I have on my table, I have materials for the blend. Brewing uh, tea is uh, very classic, very original, eastern part of Turkey is handcrafted Turkish carrot. And we, call it, uh, we put this name as Çaydanlık. And other one is also uh, contract relief and we are always using this kind of this steel ones. And this is also very classic. This is kind of, and you serve it just in last moment, kind of, and we are just putting the brew tea inside and serving tea uh, in the cups. And I have another one, we call it semaver. Semaver is just, you gather around the table, you have enough food for eating and celebrating an event and you are just gathering as a family. This is a big one, we are having water inside and then brew tea is in the top. 
you are just uh, adjusting your consistency of T with this equipment. And also there is heating part on the bottom, and Semavar is very famous in Turkey. We use in Turkey mostly loose tea, and it's like this, and it's black tea. And Turkish tea doesn't allow uh, any kind of uh, back, back tea. We are having always loose tea when we are using that. Turkey produces tea itself and consumes inside of the turkey. And turkey, Turkish people consume a lot of tea, and you can say. And we have tea cups over here, and it's like a tulip shaped. This is the uh, newest design we have. These are the classic designs, and I am just trying to make you introduce this group. And some people eat sugar, some not. And some people also eat, uh, drink the tea with this kind of uh, cubic sugar. And what we serve with tea the most, um, sweets over here, I have baklava and kadayıf and lokum. Lokum is Turkish delight. And we have over here, the savories, we have uh, pastries at the, at the top, the triangle shaped borek, and we have kalem borek, kalem means like pencil type, and we have also pide at the bottom. And they all fill either a cheese or either with meat, and they are always body with tea. This is a part of Turkish culture, and tea always needs a company. We have to have people around, you know. And this is very important for us to have that kind of uh, gatherings and to have tea. And starts with the morning and the breakfast. All day long we drink tea. And we always have the company too. And we always have people around and coming and sharing our tea. And I am going to show you how to make the tea. I am going to turn on the heat. And I have the two parts of the my teapot you see here and I will use boiled water for the top if you can I can have some boiled water over here and then I have my for my top this part is we call it demnik it's empty here but I am gonna add for one spoon for one person and then if you wanna do for a couple of and you can do one two three and then I have now is boiled water as you see for the bottom just clear water and if you use good water like bottle that will be the best tea you can have and what I am going to do I will use this hot boiled water for my tea now I am brewing. I will go halfway. Now I will cover the lid. Now my tea needs to sit like four, four um, five to ten minutes, and I don't know how strong you want your tea. And minimum five minutes, uh, maximum ten minutes, and this is gonna be ready and you can start serving your tea. Okay. So, so uh, Susan, can you tell us um, uh, the, the meaning of like having, for instance, like these decorative uh, cups? Because like, even in your house, you have many yeah, decorative... Yeah, th this is my personal, <laughs> my pet personal uh, passions, and I love decorative things. And Turkish people like the decorative stuff too. And uh, this is kind of uh, items are mostly touristic because Turkish, uh, Turkey is sitting on the land is 700 years old after empire. And we have very uh, ancient culture and we are having a lot of designs and uh, intricate designs in our uh, places. And it reflects also in our daily life and we are having tea you know, teacups, you can see they are all having tulips. Most of the tulips is a symbol of the uh, Turkish culture, um, or Turkey. You can see the Turkey is written uh, in the Ministry of Culture, 
and they are having tulips too. And it's like representing love of God. And very important in Turkish culture, the tulips. And the shape of the capsules of tulips. And other than that, it's just people love the decorations. And Eastern culture likes the decorations. And decorate their home, decorate their uh, table. And presenting things nicely and kindly. And this is our uh, part of the culture. We are doing that. So tell me a little bit about the two, the two connected. Uh, uh -huh. We're talking about uh, uh -huh. these. I've noticed that uh -huh. you have two connected, uh -huh. connected kettle. Yes. Uh, so yes. what's what's the reason behind that? I will explain to you when I am pouring the tea. This is a, you know, uh, when you see the tea, if they are sitting at the bottom, that means tea is done. Right now, tea is not done. I am just gonna explain to you why. And you will add some. You wanna have how dark your tea, how strong your tea. You are just gonna add from the top, and then you can make your own version of your tea consistency. This is for that. And also, um, the, they are breathing with the steam. You know, the tea is breathing with the steam. And this is the tea. It's not done yet, I would say, and needed to be a little bit darker color. It's like uh, red, very deep red. And we still needed time for the brewing the tea. We need at least four, five more minutes. It's gonna be done. This is the reason why we are keeping these two together. Brewing way is just a bit steamy. Any other questions? I think that's, that's really cool now to explain, yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there like, if, if for instance, uh, what occasion does Turkish people have come tea? together? And mostly breakfast is the best time of the having tea. And people start the day with breakfast for sure. And the secondly, and the, in the business places, um, they are giving some tea break. You know, all this break means a tea time. And it's around 10, 10, 10, 30 in the business places. And also if you uh, go to houses, they are having afternoon ladies parties. They are gathering and they are just coming around the table and they are chatting. And this is also another occasion for the tea. After dinner is also another occasion the family comes together. This is also another occasion for the tea. But all day long, bread means tea. You go to shopping places in Turkey, and for no reason, they are not even asking you, you want or not. Tea is coming, always, automatically. Water and tea is always automatically comes. They don't charge you for that. This is a kind of uh, showing the hospitality of the Turkish people, and they are, uh, for no reason, they are just uh, serving you the tea uh, for no reason. And any other question for that? Um, no. tea, my, my tea buddies, you can have and serve yourself. And please uh, check our videos on the YouTube or Raindrop uh, channel. And I am cooking also, uh, not making tea, also I am cooking. And I, we have cooking videos in the Raindrop the cooking channel. And if you subscribe, and you are going to get our videos. And all this uh, food, you are going to learn how to make it and from the, our videos too. So if somebody wants to learn about Turkish culture, how to make tea, uh, Turkish tea, mm -hmm. um, is that possible for them to contact you? Of course, of course, and through Raindrop. And uh, we are having videos, they can ask the question from, for the, from the uh, part of the communication from the videos. Mm -hmm. And also they can ask it through the Raindrop Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I am always available to help anybody for learning or the culture, learning how to put some certain things. And we are still having more videos are coming. And I hope we are gonna do more uh, in the future. And I hope everybody loves and enjoys the watching our videos too. Right. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I really enjoy to host you today. Yeah. And for any question, I am here. Let's just continue just to see about the tea and maybe somebody can see the last uh, part of the tea. The last part of it, yeah, yes. Just gonna we still, we still have, I guess we still have some more time, but uh, I will show you um, how changes with the minutes. 
can see just a little bit darker now. The tea is darker. That part, if you don't like this this much dark tea, and you can add some more water from bottom, and you can adjust your taste. This is all about taste. And I'm gonna serve this tea to you, guys. You can have. And I'm gonna make a little bit lighter than the next one. You can see, taste, and see the differences. You see? This is a little bit lighter. Yeah, you can see the and difference. You can see the difference. And everybody likes differently. And this is my tea. <laughs> I like strong tea. And but you can do like just a little bit lighter too. And tea bags are we don't use much most, most of the time, and we don't use the herbal tea. Herbal tea is not tea. It's not chai. It's kind of remedy, home remedy mm -hmm. for us, and that's why we call it differently. Okay. Um, and and for instance, um, so do you? What do you think people prefer more, tea or coffee in Turkey? In Turkey. Coffee is expensive. Uh, the reason um, tea is served more. It has been coffee was very popular because Ottoman Empire, while people were more more uh, rich, they they can afford the coffee in that time. And later on, as coffee become because it's export and it's coming from Brazil or from other Colombia or other other countries, and it become expensive. But Turkey has a produce a chai tea in Turkey. Lexi region produces, and 80% of the produce is consumed in Turkey. Every single person in Turkey, 2.5 kilograms tea consumes in a year. Every single person. It's very high consumption. You know. And tea is popular, I would say. Tea is very popular. So kids also drink as well tea as well? Uh, if parents are all, <laughs> you know, sometimes it may makes the iron uh, deficiency if you have it right away from the meal. And uh, I wouldn't when I was, my kids were younger. Uh, I was doing that just once in a while, you know. Uh, but of course they can have it. Yeah, just for one more time, um, uh, uh, thank you so much again, Susan. For thank you for coming in. I really enjoy to be with you today. Yeah. I hope um, um, you can. Just wanna, uh, just one more time. Let us. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the pairing? A little bit about the, um, you know, the, the delicacies we have over here. Yes. 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 Yeah. And uh, the, the the stuff we have been serving here with tea. Uh, this is our tea. This is our uh, sugar with the cubic sugar. And we have Turkish Delight over here. It's always available with the tea in Ayurgov, in the Deni Turkish houses they are serving. And this one is called uh, Kadayub. It's a shredded dough filled with pistachio. And I have baklava. And I, I don't know if I have to explain baklava. <laughs> it's like a layered dough, and filo dough, and layered with some nuts, and lots of, lots of uh, butter. And of course, uh, sugar, uh, syrup. They all has syrup in the uh, ingredients. And when it comes to the savoring, I have over here is our burek. Burek is a kind of pastry. It's salty and um, with the tea. Always in the breakfast time, mostly uh, people are uh, having. And they all fill either cheese or uh, ground beef or spinach or potatoes. You know, and I have. Top one is potatoes and another one is cheese. And I have at the bottom is called pide. It's a kind of flat bread shaped like uh, sandal. This one called pide. Uh, this is this is all uh, showing our card of uh, hospitality. Thank you so much. Uh, if you don't mind, I want, I'm very fascinated by your teacups. So you want to tell me the story around the cup? Oh, I, whenever I go shopping in Turkey or here too, I always, you know, get something like that. You know, I like the gold and uh, other stuff together. And always, my favorite to have that kind of uh, cups at home. It's, it shows our culture, you know. Uh -huh. 
It reminds me of also like a Russian culture too. They yes. A lot yes. Of flowers, a lot of colors. Yes. Yes. It's my personal thing. This these items over here you see, they all handcrafted, handmade, made in Turkey. Your pottery is very uh, uh, intricate design in Turkey, and all this coloring is uh, has special uh, ingredients together to put. They put them together. They all handmade. They all handmade. And you see here, this one is handmade. And these are, may not be, but uh, these are not really fine work, but I, I would say this group is handmade. Right. I want to serve you some tea. <laughs> yes. um, Please come and join me to, to have some tea. Do you want to have some? Yes. Thank you so much, everyone, so for having us today for the uh, episodes of uh, 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 yeah, Turkish tea ceremony. So basically, we're gonna have a Chinese tea ceremony. We're gonna have Indian tea ceremony. Uh, we're gonna have Japanese tea ceremony. So you can see the difference of different cultures, how we embrace tea, and how we embrace tea. exactly similarities, similarities too. How yes. we embrace tea, how we drink tea, how yes. we prepare tea, mm -hmm. what kind of things that we do uh, use, you know, to prepare. Like the way the Turkish, you can see the two, the two type of. Um, you know, of kettle, yes. is it called? K kettle or yeah. chai danik, it's called chai danik. Ch chai danik? Chai danik. So I, yeah. I remember you told me, uh -huh. uh, you, you, told, you told me to buy one of these and yes. I have this in my house. So yes. I have mm -hmm. something like this in my house and I'm very yeah. proud of it. Everybody <laughs> is amazed when they come to cooking mm -hmm. class, what is the difference in your tea? You know, they are tasting the tea is differently. And it's true, and I've yeah, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very different the way we have we brew it. Yes. And so if when I have guests, guests in my house, I normally use my fancy Turkish. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. What is it? What is it called? Chaydanik. Chaydanik. And people will be like, wow. Uh, the the top part is called Demnik, mm -hmm. and the fourth thing is called Chaydanik. Okay, uh -huh. great. So yes. guys, again, please be with us. Uh, continue to uh, follow the International Matikashu Group. We continue to follow International Matikashu Community for more programming, for more events like this, uh, more community, community events. I know COVID has messed up a lot of things, but we are there. You we know, are support Raindrop <laughs> Foundation, support uh, your artists, local artists, support the venues, support people who are really giving their heart out there to do things they love. Um, so thank you so much, thank Susan. You. And now, please, we can have some, some tea. Yes, please, <laughs> enjoy the tea. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>